So we have another chance to start a new year with all of the different resolutions that you might think of that uh, seemingly only typically last for about a month, you know. I'm going to start going to the gym, I'm going to start doing this and start doing that, and next thing you know, uh, you're uh, not doing any of them. But nonetheless, um, it's been amazing over the last almost 13 years now, it'll be 13 years the end of March, March the 28th, uh, that, to watch God as He has been so faithful in providing everything, everything that we've needed along the way, He has, He's taken care of us. And, you know, there have been some instances along the way um, where God really showed up. Uh, and you have to say it was God because that's the only way things uh, get done sometimes. I remember the one Sunday that we showed up at the uh, community center over here. And we were going to set up and come to find out somebody had stolen the sound system out of the closet. and You know, okay. And God provided. The next week we had another sound system uh, which led to what we have now. And so God is always taking care of everything for us. And um, you know, as, along the way, as the, as the family continues to grow closer and closer together and, and um, we experience things as a church family, there's one thing that, that uh, continues to bind all of us together more and more. I've said this a couple of times, and that is everybody has trials, everybody has tribulations. You know, and if I were to be talking to you one-on-one -on -one and asked you, do you have a specific problem in your life right now that, that you would consider to be a pretty big problem? Most everybody here would say, yeah. That's just life. That's, the, that's what we have to deal with. And so I think looking at the, looking at, at, at the, the world as a whole, where we have come from, um, following a few people who are very... Uh, plugged into the global scene. I'm, I'm going to say that 2023 is, is not going to be a breeze. I, I don't think it's going to be a lot of, you know, just wake up every day and have a really happy path of a life. I think we're going to find that we're going to, we're going to, have some issues along the way, and, and we're going to have to face some things along the way, and and uh, probably going to have to dig down deep from time to time with things that we have to respond to and take care of. But there's one thing for sure, one thing absolutely for sure. We know that God's Word is true. We know that... Jesus is at the right hand of the Father right now, interceding for us. We know that God is sovereign over all things. So really, in a sense, regardless of what this world may throw at us, we know who's in control. And that, to me, helps us look forward to this year from a, the perspective of, of growing. You know, I think that, that, that our church will see some growth. I think that individually we will see some growth and some maturing. I think uh, that, uh, that there's going to be some spiritual growth. Uh, but, but remember one thing. Along with growth, which sounds great, uh, you can't have growth without paying a price. And, and, and very simply, you go to the gym, you can't really get muscle unless you lift weights, right? Uh, the same thing is true in all aspects of your life. You can't really make any headway in your life or grow in your life without facing some trials, facing some tribulations, facing some sickness, facing some kind of devastating circumstances that, that God will help you through. Now, you know, God, God is going to help us Along the way, um, and I've used this before, he didn't 
he didn't jerk Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego up out of the fire. He was in the fire with them. And so, you know, suffice it to say that there are going to be times when, when God isn't going to jerk you out of something. He's going to be in, in there with you and walking with you through it to, 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 to get you through whatever the circumstances are. As we, as we get into 2023, I want us to keep that in mind. I want us to keep in mind that uh, I think regardless of, of what we have to endure, God wants us to make the best out of it. I think he wants us to, uh, I, I know that he wants us to continue reaching out into the community. I know that he wants us to continue uh, pulling closer together as a church family. I know that he has things in store for us that he wants us to do. So as we go into 2023, even though we might find ourselves up against a brick wall, let's remember that, that God is in this thing and God is really wanting to move us forward and bless things. There was a, a, a section of scripture that I used back whenever we were going through the book of Ephesians. Um, the series was Blessings Every Day, and then the, the sermon was um, Walking in Wisdom. And so I want to read to you Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15, 16, and 17 as our scripture text this morning. Ephesians 5, 15, 16, and 17. Verse 15, Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore... Do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Understand what the will of the Lord is. You know, every, every year, uh, magazines and, and uh, news channels, and they do a look back at 22. You know, this is what went on in 2022. And, you know, they flash all the pictures up and all that kind of good stuff. And then then typically they'll make some kind of prediction about this year or maybe, you know, years that are going to come up. Sometimes, sometimes they kind of hit on things. I think it's, it's probably more of a happenstance than really being accurate uh, prognosticators and, and uh, coming up with what's going on. Most of the time, though, they really terribly miss it bad whenever they make predictions and stuff. I'll share one with you. This was back whenever technology was taking off. Uh, 1967. <laughs> 1967 technology um, was, was starting to kind of make inroads into manufacturing and other things. And, and uh, the, the prediction was this. By the turn of the century... Technology will have taken over so much that people will only be working 22 hours a week. And 27 weeks out of the year. I think they missed that one. You know, I, I, as a matter of fact, I, I think that most of us are, are uh, substantially more busy than, than that. I mean, we do everything quickly. We... we we walk fast, we talk fast, we eat fast, you know, and then right after we get through eating, we jump up and we say, I got to run, you know, see you later, I got to go. Sometimes we kind of need to just sit back a little bit and, uh, and enjoy life. So what will we do with this year? What will we do with this year? Will we be as busy as last year? Um, will we try to make better use of our time? Um, you know, you've got 365 days this year. This is day one. Just think what you can do with the rest of the year. 364 days that you have to do stuff with. It's amazing. You know, will we be looking at the future with great anticipation or are we going to be anxious about the future? Um. 
That scripture text once again says, look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So my first point today is this. Our time on earth is limited. Our time on earth is limited. I think there's some important lessons that we can can learn out of this. The first thing is I think we must live our lives very carefully. Very carefully. Uh, there are two, two uh, scriptures from Psalms that I want to share with you. The first one is Psalm chapter 39, verse 4. It says, O Lord, make me know my end, and what is the measure of my days? Let me know how fleeting I am. How fleeting life is. Life is so short. And we need to live our lives carefully. The second psalm is Psalm 90, verse 10. The years of our life are 70, or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone, and we fly away. You know, I, I, I know that, that there are some, some youngsters that look at... Um, uh, older people as being ancient, you know, I, I can remember a day, I can remember a day whenever I looked at people who were like 40, and I thought, oh my gosh, they are so old, you know? Man, can you believe they're 45? It's really funny. It's all relative though, isn't it? Because now I look at, at mom and dad. Mom is 84, dad is 88. And I'm like, you know, I'm probably going to be there at some point in time. You know, and I hope that I'm in as good shape uh, as mom is. And dad's pretty still, still pretty sharp. You know, he, he remembers all those people. Oh, you know, you know that... He's married to Horner and so on, so on, so on, so on, so on. You know, then they were kin too, and he could go all through all that stuff. Pretty, pretty good. So it's all relative, isn't it? Um, to us, as as we get older, time becomes more valuable, and we look at what time we have and what we are doing with that time. Whenever you're younger. You, 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 you don't look at time the same. I remember a night, that I, I got a call, and it was, um, it was about 11.30. Um, we're sitting at Sonic, listening to the radio, and my truck won't start. How long have you been listening to the radio? Couple of hours. Okay, well, I'll grab some cables and head that way. Yeah, you know, but from from the parents' perspective, you know, whenever the kids are out, a couple of hours go by and you're wondering, I wonder where they are. I wonder if they're on the side of the road. I wonder if they're in a ditch. I'm wondering, you know, all this, that, and the other. It's a it's a matter of perspective, and it, it's. It's a different way that we look at things. Um, there's a particular word that the King James Version uses in Ephesians chapter 5. It says, see then that ye walk circumspectly, circumspectly. And, and that's a little bit of an unusual word. It means um, circum, which is a circle, is, is around, and then speckly is to look. So it's telling us to look around at what's going on. Uh, let's say that tonight we have a, a really bad earthquake and, and Memphis falls in the river. It's really a bad earthquake. And whenever it's all over with, you recognize in the kitchen that all of your plates have come out and hit the floor. Glass everywhere. But you've got to walk through the kitchen. How are you going to walk through the kitchen? You're going to be looking. You're going to look all around at what's going on as you walk through the kitchen. Well, that's what, that's what we're being told here in Ephesians. Paul is saying that we must walk through life carefully. 
very carefully, taking close, paying close attention to what's going on around us. There's a, um, there's a mindset that um, is easy to fall into. And this mindset is, okay, so I know that I'm going to get up and I'm going to go to work and I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. And I know we're going we're gonna to take a vacation and we're going to you know, go and visit so-and-so. And you start making all kinds of plans and things because you're used to the time that you have. If you knew, on the other hand, that you had five years and it's starting to count down, you would look at life very differently. You would look at those things that, that are part of your bucket list a little differently. You would probably be spending more time with God, especially as the clock continued to count down. That's kind of nice in a sense that you have an idea, but the Bible doesn't tell us that. As a matter of fact, more specifically, the Bible tells us that we're not promised tomorrow. You know? Um, I could go to sleep tonight and never wake up. Of course, absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And Paul was like, you know, I am so conflicted over this. I would rather be with Jesus. But uh, if I'm going to have to stay here, I'm going to stay here and help you out. So we need to look at it, I think, differently. I think we need to, to look at life as an opportunity. Which is my, my second point, is this. Make everything an opportunity. Make the most out of every opportunity that you have. Uh, Paul tells us, secondly, that um, to make the most out of every opportunity because the days are evil. If the days were evil in Paul's day, what would you call them today? Eviler? Evilist? Horrible? So here are a couple things. Um, Satan is a robber and a thief. And he will try to seize any and every moment to rob from you, to steal from you, to put you in situations that, that you know, you, you, you find yourself spinning your wheels, not accomplishing anything for God. It's because he's a thief and a robber. And then... You know, there, there are those moments where because he's a liar, he tries to get you all tied up into knots about something that's just a lie. Trying to get you to the place where he can get your mind off of God and on your troubles. Secondly, there are other things that try to compete for your time, that will, uh, that will seize the moment, that will take your attention away from what it is that you're trying to get done or take your attention away from the opportunities you have in front of you. I'll give you a great example. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And Jesus is, is at their house. At the house. And Mary is sitting there at his feet. This is God in the flesh, in the house. And Mary is taking advantage of it. And Martha comes out of the kitchen. She's all huffy and puffy and just getting all over Mary. Get yourself up and come in here and help me in this kitchen. Jesus, tell Mary to get up and come and help me. And Jesus says, ah, but Mary's doing the better thing. Martha 
had the moment stolen from her. Mary took advantage of the opportunity. You can find this over in Luke chapter 10. Martha was preoccupied with doing stuff. Mary, on the other hand, was focused on Jesus. And we, you know, we make those mistakes way too frequently, I think. Um, it's so easy to... It's so easy to allow external things just to kind of take over. And you get all huffy and puffy and, and uh, overloaded with life. You know, I mean, it's so easy to get overloaded to commitments. You know, people call in all the time or texting all the time. Hey, can you do this? 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 You, do this? you know. Uh, my boss sent me a text message. I took Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off last week. He sends me a text message Thursday night. Hey, can you get on uh, online just for a minute and help one of the guys uh, with some, some problems? And, uh, and luckily, I was able to say, the baby is asleep in my office. I can't go in there right now. And he sends back this great big smiley face with a ah, uh, you know, kind of thing. And I was glad that Keithling was asleep in the office. We also get overloaded with stuff. With stuff, you know. And as, as, as weak of, um, of an example as this is, whenever I tell you, it, it will make sense, right? So... Uh, I had a three-story tobacco barn, which is now on the ground. And I am so preoccupied with the stuff, it's driving me crazy. There's not anything I can do about it, but look at it, you know. And, and, and Weston has all kinds of questions about why did it fall, why, you know, I, I, the wind blew it down, <laughs> those kinds of things. He just wants to know. So we get overloaded with stuff. We get overloaded with possessions. We get overloaded with, with, with you know, cars that, that we have to keep up. We get overloaded with all kinds of things that just seemingly uh, take over part of our life. And then thirdly, we get overloaded with, with work. You know, it's so easy. So easy to just get caught up in work. And you, you find yourself... Uh, almost totally consumed during the day with work. And sometimes it's hard to comprehend other things going on around you because of work. And so I think that we, um, we, we, we need to step back from all of this being overloaded and figure out how to readjust the load. And I'm going to share some things with you here in just a minute. The first thing that I want to share with you is that there are 8,760 hours this year. 8,760 hours this year. Now, hours, 60 minutes. You can get a lot done in 60 minutes. If you, if you take care to, to really focus on those opportunities, especially those opportunities that God moves right in front of you, you can accomplish a lot. You can accomplish a lot. So what do we do with this? What are we going to do with all of this time that we have this year? Well, point number three is this. Understand what the will of God is, what the Lord's will is. Verse 17 Paul tells us, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So what do you think the will of the Lord is for you for this year? I think you need to prioritize your life to start with. 
You know, how do you prioritize your life? You put God first. First and foremost, God not only should be a part of your life, God should be at the top of the heap. Right? And, and you're all here, and, and I know that, that you all are, are um, Christians, and, and so whenever you stop to look at, at life, your life in particular, if you put God at the top of your life, then everything else is going to line up like it's supposed to. Your, your, your husband or your wife, your children are after them. Your, your job is down on the list. You know, friends are, are on the list. But God has to be first. And if God is first, whenever Sunday rolls around, there's never, ever, ever a question about if you're going to be at church or not. Right? Landon and I were talking about that just the other night. It's not a question. It's, it's, it's automatic. It's, it's something that you're going to do. Oh, but you know what? This is bowl season. There's going to be a kickoff. It's going to kick off. It's going to happen about, oh, I don't know, 1130. I'm not going to go to church so I can stay home and watch the kickoff. I got a few things that I can say about kicking something. That might make a little bit more sense, but I'm not going to go there. The second thing is this. Schedule time to pray and read your Bible. Now, why did I use the word schedule? Because if you don't schedule it, you're not going to do it. Schedule time to read your Bible and to pray. Right? Do you, do, does it take a lot of time to read your Bible? No, it doesn't. As a matter of fact, um, I, I've got the Bible app, version Bible app. And inside the Bible app, I have the Bible Project. The Bible Project is a really great uh, read through the Bible in a year plan. And the guys who do this also do little videos that explain every book. You come into a book, they, they have this little devotional video and says, you know, this is how this book starts, this is what the author is doing, blah, 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 blah. And that's the book of 1 Timothy. It's really great. And so when you read it, it makes so much more sense. And it's free. It's free. So prioritize. Put God at the top. Schedule time to read your Bible and to pray. Thirdly, increase the amount of time that you spend with your family. Now some people, some people do pretty good with this. Some people don't do so good with this. And I can tell you this. If you are married, then you should schedule, in my opinion, you should schedule a date night once a week. A date night once a week. And keep to it. <laughs> what can I say? You know, and, and here's the thing. Um, this, this, this life that we live is like on a, on a fast track. I mean, it, it, we're like, you know, almost wearing jet shoes or something, it seems. It just, you know, it, it, life goes by. I mean, it, I can remember so clearly the day Landon was born. And I blinked, and now he's got three of his own. And I'm like, wow, wow. where did that come from? Well, I, I mean, he, he and Ashley, you know, are married, and, and I, I, I understand all of that. <laughs> I, I, I understand all that, but I mean, <laughs> what? You know, it just blows my mind. I'm like, oh, Wow. Incredible. So time goes by so fast. Your children grow up so fast. You know, family and friends uh, grow up so fast. And, and I was talking to a guy the other day, and we were just talking about people that we graduated with. <laughs> he said, you know, some of those people look really old. And I'm like, dude, we graduated with them. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I mean, look, you know. 
but one of the things that we were talking about is how many are no longer here with us? You know, life happens. And so you've got to prioritize your family and keep that, uh, keep that guarded. Um, don't let those moments get away. Spend quality time with your children and your grandchildren. And, and uh, do, just do things together. Number four is this. Um, do a good job at your job. And why do I say that? Because the Bible tells us that we are supposed to do a good job at our job. Uh, the, the Bible tells us that we are to honor the Lord with our work. And so if we do that, people are going to know it. They're going to recognize it. They're going to see that, that you are a Christian and that you're, you're doing the right things at work. So this first part is about setting your priorities. Establish your priorities. Uh, the next part is, is kind of similar to that, but it's, it's, it's more about how you do these things. Learn how to live today. Learn how to live today. Uh, you mean there's some people that don't know how to live? There's some people that um, life just seems to escape them. They, they, don't, they don't know how to engage themselves in those opportunities. They're always... Thinking about things down the down the road, you know, or or they get anxious about what's going to happen tomorrow, or anxious about what's going to happen next week, or anxious about what's going to happen next month, you know, and 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 the way that you look at this is, you know, what the Bible says, tomorrow's going to take care of itself. So don't be anxious today about tomorrow he says don't be anxious about anything i was going to use really good grammar and say nothing don't be anxious about nothing but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known to god learn how to live today life you know unfortunately Life is something that happens to a lot of people while they're making plans about what they're going to do. You know, they, they, they find themselves engaged in a day, and they're making plans about something they're going to do, and, and then life just seems to pass them by. You know, and then we, we get down into December of 2023, and we're looking at, at uh, having our holiday dinner here, before you can turn around and you're like, oh, I remember the holiday dinner last year. It was so great. You know, and, the, and then the next thing you know, Christmas comes and goes and New Year's comes and goes. And, and life just seemingly will pass us by. There is, um, there is a, a little thing that I don't know who the author is, um, but somebody wrote this, and it's pretty, it's pretty good. It says, um, I hope, I hope during the new year, may you have enough happiness to keep you sweet, enough trials to keep you strong, enough sorrow to keep you human, enough hope to keep you happy, enough failure to keep you humble, enough success to keep you eager, enough friends to give you comfort, enough wealth to meet your needs, enough enthusiasm to make you look forward to tomorrow, and enough determination to make each day better than the day before. Isn't that good? That's really good. That's kind of that's a, a, a way of looking at life and taking things as they come, but not for granted. I'm going to close with this. Romans chapter 13, verses 11 and 12. Romans 13, verses 11 and 12. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. 
The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. And that's very true. That is very, very true. Salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. And honestly, I, I, I personally think that, that um, it's closer than what we really give uh, thought to. I think if we really knew how close the day of salvation, the day of the coming of the Lord was um, that we would do things differently. So, remember you have 8,760 hours, give or take a few hours now, to reprioritize your life, to learn how to live, to put God at the top, your spouse next and children next to work things take taking every opportunity you can to make a difference in life and let's go into 2023 uh, with the mindset that the way that we live our lives will bring God glory and honor right Let's pray and then we'll have our communion. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this year now opening for us. I pray that you would help us, Father God, to put things into proper perspective and, and to latch on to really great routines and habits and um, more importantly, to take time out to make you the priority of our lives. I love you. I thank you for this time. And now, Father, as we prepare uh, for communion this morning, um, I, I, I want to say that, corporately speaking, Father God, and, and um, from a personal perspective, those things that um, that maybe have caused me to not spend as much time with you or reading your word or talking with you. Those areas um, in all of our lives where we've messed up, I pray that you would forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I pray that right now you would see us as holy, being covered with the blood of Jesus Christ, and that as we take this juice, this, this bread, that we would remember the cost, the price that was paid, that we may fall before your throne and receive grace. Father, bless those that are here today. Touch them all in a very special way. Lead, guide, and direct us now into this new year that we may serve you and bring you glory and honor in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'm going to ask Thomas and Danny to come now and begin to serve.